Kia ora, boys and girls. This morning I want to read you a story called The Happy Hedgehog. It's by Marcus Pister. Once upon a time, all stories start like that. It was a beautiful day in Miko, the little hedgehog. There he is. Was feeling completely content. He loved his garden. He knew every flower, all the herbs, and even the weeds by name. More than just their names, though. Nico knew about their healing powers. Little Hedgehog also knew all the animals round about. Suddenly a voice shattered his thoughts. Ha! Were you lounging about? You lazy good-for-nothing! It was Grandfather Terry. The youth of today are simply useless, said Terra. When I was a boy, wouldn't have occurred to me to sit around all day. You should do something. But, Grandfather, said Miko, I am doing something. I'm watching the clouds, looking at the plants. Ridiculous, that's absurd. You should take advantage of your youth to accomplish something. So important, so to make you happy. Sounds like his grandfather's agenda, really, doesn't it? There he is. Grandfather wanting to be happy. Mika answered, well, I'm quite happy here. Impossible, said Grandfather. Go and take a look how others lead their lives. Mika was confused, but he didn't think that Grandfather Tarot looked particularly happy either. What did others do that was so much better? The little hedgehog wondered. I have to go and see for myself. So off he set. Suddenly a tortoise sped by Miko. Hey, tortoise! Wait a minute, called Miko. Why are you running? I'm, I'm training, said the tortoise. Training for what? said the little hedgehog. Training to be the fastest tortoise in the world. Mingo scratched his head. Isn't it a bit difficult to run with a heavy shell on your back? Of course it is, <laughs> said the tortoise. That's why I have to keep on training. But I, but if I become the fastest tortoise in the world, I'll be famous and happy. That sounded good to Mika. Let me run with you, he said. So the two of them took off. But Mingo soon gave up. He was completely worn out. Oh dear, thought Miko. Running can be fun, but not like this. Suddenly a hare shot past him. Hey, wait, you also in training? The hare looked baffled. Training? No, I'm going to school. School? What's that? Oh, come along with me, he answered. Come and see for yourself. There's the hare. All right, said Miko, and he followed the hare to school. Miko hid, hid behind a tree and watched. The teacher taught addition, subtraction, geography, and writing. Miko couldn't understand a word. Later he found hair. Did you understand all those things the teacher said? Are you kidding, said hair? I understood absolutely nothing. I just memorized everything. My head will be so full when I'm finished. Maybe one day I'll be the most brilliant hair of all, and then I'll certainly be happy. Nico slipped away. He thought, you know, it's great fun to learn new things, but just memorizing without really understanding, that's not what I want. And deep in the woods he heard a grunting and a growling. It was Badger, lifting an enormous stone. Can I help you, asked Miko. The terrifying roar, the badger heaved the stone high up and then let it thud to the ground. Miko jumped back. What are you trying to do? I'm building up my muscles. I want to become the strongest badger in the world. Oh no, not again, thought Miko. Why would you want to be so strong, asked Miko. What do you mean? If I am the strongest in the world, then everyone will respect me. Wouldn't be afraid of anyone. That would make me very happy. 
He could have thought so. There were certain advantages of being strong. Can I give it a try, Sin? Of course, Badger Grin. Here, try this first little stone. He got grass or something. Struggled to lift it up. Got the stone as high as his belly and then it slipped to the ground. And landed on his toe. Ouch! This is silly, said Miko. Miko promised himself to lift only stones when he had to build a house or the wall around his herb garden. But just to get stronger? No, thank you. Miko thought for a while. All the animals were busy and ambitious. They wanted to be fast and smart and strong, so they would be happy. But it seemed to Miko that while they were striving, they weren't enjoying life at all. Did Miko really want to live that way? Thoughtfully, he made his way back home. Went right back in his garden with the singing birds, the beautiful plants and the passing clouds. A wave of contentment passed over. Miko heard a horse cough. Turn around. It was his grandfather. So, Miko, did you go out and learn something today? Yes, I did, Grandfather. But you're coughing. Sit down and make you a cup of tea with herbs from my garden, mixed with fresh honey. That'll certainly do you some good. You think so? Oh, yes, I know other healing herbs, too. I can help a sprained foot, a headache, and lots more. Is that so, said Grandfather? Grandfather Tarek made himself comfortable among the herbs and flowers, and he sipped to sweet tea, which indeed did help us cough. He asked Miko questions, and with each answer, Grandfather Tarek saw how much his grandson really did know, and how much there was to learn in Miko's garden. There is the story. You know, there was this wise old poet. His name was T.S. Eliot. T for Thomas, S for Stearns. Elliot. And he once wrote in a poem, We shall not cease from exploration, and at the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Have a lovely week. And here's my hedgehog. He, he just arrived here one day. This is Oko. Not sure where he came from, but he decided to stay. Have a great week.